Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. The season's changing in most parts of the world. Some people are welcoming autumn or fall, others are welcoming spring. As for us here in the Philippines, it's been raining almost every day for the last three to four weeks. Some days we get a bit more sun, but day or night, it's really been raining mostly. And so I had a chance to wear some fragrances in my collection, which are more suitable for the colder sweater weather kind of days. And I will be sharing 10 of my favorite favorite cozy perfumes perfect for those days but before we get started if it's your first time in the channel hello and welcome my name is jane thank you for stopping by if you enjoy fragrance related content please consider clicking the subscribe button below if you haven't already click on the bell as well to turn on notification for any new videos going up for days when you need to wrap yourself in some cozy, cocooning scents, these are my top picks. The list has four gourmand fragrances, two cozy tea fragrances, two coffee scents, and two vanilla-centric perfumes. So if you're interested to know what they are, please keep watching. The first gourmand in this list is one of my favorites from Killian from the Billiard Ball with a very long name collection. I honestly can't recall the name of this collection. But this is Princess. I have this in the Rose de my Flanker but I tend to grab for this on rainy days more. This is straight up marshmallow on my skin. Discredit the notes of lemon, green tea, ginger, peach, hedion, jasmine, apple, marshmallow, vanilla, and benzoin. On me, this goes straight to the base. This is my perfect marshmallow vanilla scent at the moment. Very cozy with just the right amount of warmth and powderiness in the base for that sweet, comforting, uplifting feel. You know I don't like powdery scents much, but this doesn't have a thick, talcum-like smell. It's more like fluffy, musky softness. This is a moderate projector at best, not super long-lasting on skin, but when you spray this on scarves and your clothes, this is going to last long. This will also do well as a date-night fragrance in our local weather. It smells very inviting, a little playful and sexy, but approachable nonetheless. This is available at Sephora. I don't know where else you can get this. I'm not too sure if this is now a Sephora exclusive but it's definitely not permanently discontinued at the moment. Grab a bottle or a sample if you can. And with reference to the more popular expensive Love Don't Be Shy from the same brand, this is its more caring demure sister. Next up is Pivon Angel by Mugler. This is totally a scent of the 90s to 2000s, but that's why it gives me so much comfort. It's a perfume I might have smelled a lot growing up, and it's always a scent I will associate with kindness. This is a flanker to the original Angel Eau de Parfum from the Angel Garden of Stars collection, definitely discontinued. This is from the pre-reformulation, pre-L'Oreal days of Mugler. The box still says Theory Mugler, but this you can still get from online discounters. This came out in 2005 and has notes of peony, patchouli, pink pepper, rose, vanilla, and lily of the valley. And I believe so much more. This is a fresher take on the original Angel Eau de Parfum. This whole entire composition is fresher with the addition of peony, lily of the valley, pink pepper, but retains the warmth and allure of the lovely caramel, chocolate, patchouli, vanilla in the base that's in Angel's DNA. This is potent. You don't need to spray a lot. This is very addictive. You keep wanting to smell this over and over on yourself. If you're an Angel fan like me, you might want to try your nose on this one. I got my bottle from Fragrance X. Um, there are also legitimate sellers of samples of this in Shopee PH if you are from the Philippines. Another gourmand in the list is Jessica Simpson's Fancy. This has notes of pear, apricot, red berries, middle notes are caramel, almond, gardenia, and jasmine. The base is vanilla, amber, and sandalwood. This is a gourmand but has the airy, fairy feel of a freshie. The pear, apricot, and the berries keep this lifted and not base heavy. This is such an easy reach for me. I get excited every time it starts raining. I spray this on and instantly feel happy. This is deliciously warm and cozy without choking you out. Very affordable, probably my favorite celebrity for perfume among the very few I've tried. I hope they never discontinue this. Available to us here in the Philippines in online discount websites like Fragrance X. 
the last gourmand in this list is said to be the best gourmand ever and this is Italica from Search Off. This used to be super exclusive and a limited release in one size bottle only. This used to be a unicorn fragrance but they made this more available this year and you can now easily get this from the Search Off Universe website as well as retailers. Plus, this is now available in a smaller 30ml bottle. This to me smells like a pastry in the realm of vanilla milk, almond cookie and so much more. This smell milky creamy and the almond is a real standout here. I have initially worn this in warmer weather and this was rather flat. I didn't get why this was a unicorn but I heard Giselle from GB Fragrances. She has a wonderful channel. I will link it down below. She said that this smells better and performs very well in colder weather. Some perfumes flourish in the heat but this one smells best when it's colder. I have a full review of this fragrance uh, which I will link in this video if you are interested to find out more. This and me last for hours even though this does not project beyond arm's length you can smell this on you for hours this also has better projection and overall smells ultimately better on my hair um, you might argue that this is super expensive to be worn as a hair mist but maybe my skin turns this into something else so it doesn't smell as good but on my hair this smells like a unicorn fragrance yes so if you find this falling flat on your skin try to spray this on hair or on clothes you can also layer this with the vanilla fragrance if you want to make this more feminine and sweeter. I personally like this as it is. Another cozy, comforting, delicious fragrance for you to try, Italica from Surge Off. Next up are my cozy tea fragrances. Some tea fragrances are made for the high heat, some are for sweater weather, gloomy days. Commodity Tea. Commodity is a house not many people talk about. I believe this house is undergoing some rebranding recently under new management with newer bottles, some new releases I believe. This is their older bottle and this cap is... Uh isn't the one it came in we have replaced the cap the original one is white rubber that started to get gooey and sticky so we threw it away this cap belongs to an empty bottle of mr burberry that belongs to my husband so commodity tea starts off with the freshness of mandarin orange along with black currant and honey and aromatic from the basil in the middle you have oolong tea damask rose and tonka bean and the base has tobacco patchouli sandalwood and cashmere musk the mandarin is prominent on initial spray sweetened by some honey and balanced by the basil it starts to smell really really nice and cozy as the oolong tea and the tonka comes in as well as i believe some of the base notes creep in on me this smells very unisex in the open Opening, but after 30 minutes or so this smelled more and more masculine on my skin so what I sometimes do is I layer this with a few sprays of a rose perfume or a light vanilla perfume or a scented body lotion to add a little bit of feminine edge or some sweetness my husband also loves this scent on him this smell very manly the base notes come through more on him especially the tobacco and the sandalwood for the men in the group you might want to get a hold of this one also for women who like gender bending perfumes you would enjoy this to cozy up. Commodity perfumes are available locally at Art of Scent. I think this brand is perpetually on sale. I got this 100ml for a really, really good deal. Thay Noir 29 from Le Labo is a very recent discovery of mine. Because of how Santal 33 played on my skin, I was so nervous to go anywhere near any Le Labo fragrance. But then I heard so much about Thay Noir and how it's made to some people's top favorites. So I blind bought this small 15ml uh, bottle which by the way is really really pricey for a 15ml. But now I wished I went for a bigger bottle. This is beautiful. The moment I spray this on, I knew I would get a bigger bottle when this runs out. So this is fig, bay leaf, bergamot, on top, cedar, vetiver, and musk in the heart, tobacco, and hay in the base. No tea note, that's right, but the combination of notes smell a lot like spiced aromatic black tea in a very feminine way. I don't get a particular standout note in here. They all are so well blended. In many ways, this is similar to commodity tea composition-wise, but in Thay Noir, there's this 
feminine sweetness, this feminine allure to this scent, reminiscent of a mother's hug. That's my scent association for this perfume. So this lasted forever on my skin, like eight hours later, my husband can still smell this on me. The next day, this one's still in my hair. Pricey, but totally worth it. If I can recommend to you anything from Le Labo, it's definitely not Santal 33, it's this one, Te Noir 29. From tea, we go to coffee perfumes. One that I fell in love with at first sniff is from Theodoros Kalotinis, and this is Coffee Addict. This is a Greek indie house, and I discovered this house from Paula Bianca. I will link her channel down below. This is a hyper-realistic coffee perfume. Smells like an actual drink from, let's say, Starbucks. So this, by all intents and purposes, is a gourmand offering. In the air, this will remind you of the smell of a posh cafe, the mix of coffee, of vanilla, of milk, and a flavored syrup and pastry in the air. If you find this too sweet or too home sprayish, try to layer this with a vanilla perfume or a predominantly mask perfume. I like to layer this with Kiali mask or uh, Kiali vanilla to make this smell more perfumey rather than an actual cup of vanilla latte. So the coffee note here is definitely a standout. It's reminiscent of a dark black roast, something like Kapeng Barako if you're from the Philippines. This is a wet coffee experience, not a dry coffee bean smell. There's also a little booziness in here and this is really, really, really sweet and will kind of remind you of tiramisu somehow. I use this to get me going when it's gloomy and cloudy, cold, or rainy. I don't know if it's the coffee lover in me, but this is a mood uplifter and instantly awakens your senses to face the day. If you somehow can't or won't drink coffee but love the smell of it, try this one out. You also have to like wearing something syrupy sweet to like this. Next up is something from Mason Margiela from the Replica range and this is Coffee Break. I only have a carded sample but I'm happy to be able to test this out during the rainy days. This definitely smells more like a perfume than a um, coffee addict here. So top notes on this are pepper, orange blossom, and patchouli. Middle notes are lavender, coffee, milk, tonka bean, siam benzoin, and cypriol oil. And the base is vanilla cedar and vetiver standout notes to me are definitely lavender creamy coffee and vanilla a little bit of spice here and there so what makes this cozy relaxing and comforting is i believe the lavender notes in here the smell of coffee is very much in the background and only really noticeable on initial spray to me in the dry down i get sweet vanilla mixed with soapy lavender mostly and it's a scent you can associate with relaxation Lavender generally has that feel and vibe. Call it a break or a pause, this perfume is going to want to make you stop for a bit and enjoy a little bit of peace and quiet, rainy day or not. Coffee lover or not, you might dig this perfume if you're on the hunt for a unique and cozy lavender fragrance. Next are the vanillas and first up is from Jean-Paul Gaultier and this is La Belle. I love this for when there's just a bit of rain and it's still ultra humid but it's not a sunny day. If you're from around here, you kind of guess how that weather feels like. This is a fruity vanilla with a lot of freshness from the bergamot and pear and a lot of depth from the vanilla, amber, and vetiver. Leather, I don't get any at all. Maybe it's there adding to the depth as well but no standout animalic leather or otherwise. No loud florals in here as well. This is basically a semi-fresh ambery vanilla fragrance. This is a great sweater weather perfume, great as a date night fragrance as well. This draws people in. This is so addicting so lovely, so alluring, so warm and cozy. If you love fresher pear and vanilla perfume, try this one out. This is available in major department stores locally. The last perfume in this list and another vanilla fragrance is Nishane Annie. This is new and unsprayed as I'm trying to go through a small decant. This is a tester bottle I got from Fragrance USA back in November 2020 during the Black Friday sale. So this perfume had a lot of hype the whole of 2020, I believe. A lot of people said this is the best unisex vanilla, a vanilla like no other, and so on. This is one of two Nishane bottles I own, which is saying a lot, seeing as this brand is difficult to get over here. I carefully picked this one out of the 10 Nishane samples I got. Hype aside, this is really, really, really good. This starts off quite punchy with some spice 
spices including ginger, pink pepper, and cardamom. There's almost like an herbal minty quality to this in the opening that to me is very pleasant and surprisingly not off-putting. And then this quickly develops into a lovely vanilla on skin. A little powdery, definitely sweet but still spicy. The spice never leaves this composition so the dry down is not your plain Jane sweet vanilla. I can see why men love this as much as women do. On a man's skin, the spices are highlighted more with some vanillic undertones. But it's just as beautiful as when this touches a woman's skin and goes through a more vanillic transformation. I love this for the rainy sweater weather days. I can never wear this on sunshiny days. But when it's cold and rainy and windy, this makes me giggle in the light. This is such a joy to wear. This to me is a masterpiece piece blind by worthy no but this is a must try for everyone gentlemen ladies young old noob rookie pro and everyone in between that's nishane annie and that completes today's top 10 list. Do you have a favorite rainy day, sweater weather, early fall fragrance? Let me know down in the comments what your must-haves, cozy, comforting perfumes are for this type of days or these types of season. And if you like this video, please don't forget to share this to your friends, hit the thumbs up button below, subscribe to the channel, and please hit the bell to be notified of future videos from the channel. Thank you again for watching. Stay warm and safe. I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Thank you.